there's so many things that we have to do in web development that when it crosses over to things like React and Next.js, the simplest things become the most difficult things. So we had to pass UTM URL parameters into a form. And it's something that seems so obviously easy when you used to work with vanilla JavaScript, jQuery, cookies, you would be able to just put a cookie into a form or just get some kind of value, whatever you use, and just push it into the form. This is a very common practice that has to be done on a ton of sites, which is grab something from a URL parameter and submit it to a form and send it to some backend. So how do we do that inside of React? And in particular, I'm gonna be using the Next.js framework. If you like React, Next.js, CSS, front-end animation, hit that like button, subscribe, and let's get started. In our use case, typically what we find is we have clients who we run ads for, and then when people link to our sites, they typically have additional parameters that you want to capture. So for example, if you look here, I have the local host and says UTM source equals Google ads, UTM medium equals search, for example. And those are just things that you want to you know, it's going to go to your Google Analytics, but you also might want to send it through a form to send it to some backend to track the source of where it came from. These parameters could be anything. You might be you might be sending parameters from Shopify, from from any from any e-commerce website, you know, that you want to track. So how do you do that inside of, you know, Next.js and React? So let's get started. And right now I have just a form and this won't be a tutorial on how to submit a form, but just to show you that we have an email, let's say, and then we have these two hidden fields, for example, where we typically want to send data there and push it through the form. I made them text so that you could see what they are, but you could also change those to hidden. Someone came to the site and they put in the UTM source equals Google ads and UTM medium. So how do we grab that? Because we want to make sure that we can grab those from any page. We want to make sure that we either use something in a layout component or something that's across the board. We need to have a use effect to grab the, the URL parameters from any page. And since we don't know where the contact form is going to be, what if the contact form is not on the home page? What if the contact form is somewhere else? We want to carry those parameters throughout the site. So we want to grab the parameters and what we have to do is put them into local storage of the browser. So the client's browser, we want to take what was submitted, not what, what came through and put inside of local storage and then read the local storage and then plug them in into those fields and then send off the form. So the first step, what we have to do is just create a use effect. So I'm just have my default page here and I have a use effect. So um, I'm going to go ahead and create that, show you how it's done. Oops, what do we got here? Oh, I think I have this co-pilot thing installed. This thing is like going crazy with like, oh my God, this might be, <laughs> this is gonna drive me crazy. Hold on, stop. Uh, oh God, it is like, this is the first time I'm actually doing a tutorial with this co GitHub co-pilot where it like auto does things. All right, so actually it looks pretty cool, but, and first we wanna do is grab the, the router. So we wanna make sure that we can get the router so let's import the router from Next.js. This is why I love Next.js is because you pretty much have a router. Um, it's similar inside of React, but you have to um, use another package for that. So in this case, it comes built into Next.js. So we have the use router. And what we're gonna do is do a const, and we're gonna get the query inside of, from the use router. The query is going to be all of the URL parameters, and that's it. That's what's awesome about this, because look, if we do a use effect, and we say console log the query, but we have to have a dependency here. So we'll say, because we want to make sure that it loads. Yeah, though there is a copilot thing. Well, no, I don't know if that works. I think we need to wait for the router. So let's inspect the console log. Uh, let's see what it did. And no, so, oh, it actually came through. So we are dependent on the query. And now we see, if you see here, if you look in the console log, see at the bottom here, it's created an object with all of the URL parameters. So what I sent here was UTM source. And then what I sent here was UTM medium. And you see here, UTM source equals Google ads, and then UTM medium equals search. So we have the query. Now what we want to do is put that into local storage because as people surf throughout the site, we want to still capture that. We don't want to lose that. So the next step is to say, I want to say if <clears throat> query dot um, UTM source, okay? Because I this is what I, you know, I know these are the URLs and I want, oh wow, it's, this copilot thing's crazy. It's actually 
doing it. But let me write this out. Um, oh my God, it's so if UTM, so then we want to say, um, we want to set local storage. So it's actually the copilot has this wrong. So we want to set a local storage. So we can say local storage set item UTM source. And we want to say use the query.utm source value. And now I'm just going to duplicate that and do the same thing for the UTM medium. So we're going to say UTM medium, which is the same thing on my console log, set the UTM medium, set the, the query.utm medium. So great. So now we have this in local storage. So now if we refresh, right? So um, and anytime we surf this page, this use effect is going to execute. We'll go to our storage and you will see our local storage. If we scroll down, there it is. UTM source, Google ads, UTM medium search. So it's, it's put what the URL parameters inside of local storage. Now, if we go to any other page, you'll see that this will you know, say, of course, if I go back to my index, you want to make sure that you are putting this use effect inside of some component that is across the site because you want to make sure it captures your parameters on any. So we'll say button and then we'll say um, submit. I won't be styling this, but I'm placing a button and then we'll say on click, we'll create a handler. So we'll say um, submit form. OK, so there's no function just yet. So I'll create that function up here function. So now we have a form. And now what I've done here is we have these two forms and this is typical, you know, how to read variable values from a form. You want to give it a ref, right? So um, you want to give it a, a, for this, I have a ref email ref, ref UTM source ref, ref UTM medium, you know, representing what I want. So I have the const refs up here. I've imported use ref and now I can get those values of whatever is, you know, inputted. You know what? Let me move this to another page so you can see what's going to happen. So let me take this all over into an about page and I just want to carry this. All right. And I'm going to delete the set, right? I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to get rid of this. All right. So now we have, let's go here. Now we want to create state for each of these things. So we're going to say um, empty state for these. So, you know, const UTM source, set UTM source, use state, nothing. UTM medium said UTM, whatever, whatever the link you want to call it. Right. So we're going to say if the local storage get item UTM source, right, if that exists, which it does exist. And if it doesn't, it'll just ignore this. Then we'll say make a const UTM storage, set it to the item and then set the state of this to this. Right. So now we have state here saved. Once this page loads, we have the storage item saved. Now we're going to do the same thing going to replicate that for the UTM medium. If you console log this, actually let's console log, not, not console log. Let's actually, let's actually do it right now. So let's say UTM, uh, UTM source. Let's look at what the state looks like. So if you see here, there it is. And then if we do the UTM medium state, there it is as well. So now if we go back here, right, we could refresh. And if we go here and we hit a refresh, it's always get now these values are always going to stay because we they were stored in storage on the first time they executed and now on this page where I want to submit these in the form I'm capturing them putting them in state and now I could put these as the default value of these forms now you don't necessarily have to put them in the form and show them you can execute the form and on the handler you know inside of your function you could just you know do whatever you want send them off to the form but because i like to see them i like to make sure that they're there i'm putting them in the you could put them in like a hidden field and i just want to see sometimes i'll inspect the page like hey are those field are those values there so let's just do that right now we'll put them right here utm so we'll say default value UTM source and default value, the state of UTM medium over here. That's it. So now I know again, now what you could do is obviously these guys, you can make them hidden right in the form so that no one sees them. Same thing Google as just so you can see them, so I can sh show you for the sake of tutorial. And then this is just typical, you know, your typical form, you know, you go ahead and submit and then you could just say right there, const email ref and it's wow, copilot's actually right there, const utm source ref dot current value. Um, and then same thing with the medium. Wow, that was them using GitHub copilot. That's pretty crazy because that's exactly what I was going to type. So now we have these values right in there. 
and just send them off to the back end, send them off to your API. If you had a fetch here, you'd post them along with the fields. It's exactly how you just literally just get URL parameters and send them off to your back end. This works really good for search parameters, for any kind of UTM links, or any kind of URL parameters you need to send off to your back end developers. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.